Want to make your game stand out with glowing, eye-catching visuals? In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to create your very first shader graph in Unity 6. No coding required. All right, by the end of this, you'll have a custom glowing material you can drop onto any object in your scene. If you get lost or just want to skip the video, feel free to download the project in the description below. If you like this video, hit subscribe and like and join my Patreon. It helps me support the creation of more videos like this one. All right, let's dive in. All right, Unity 6 comes with the Universal Render Pipeline, or URP, which means that Shader Graph is ready to go. It's already included. If you're starting a new project, just choose 3D URP template. If you're adding Shader Graph to an existing project, then open the Package Manager by going to Window, Package Manager, and type in Shader Graph in the search bar. Once you're there, hit install. Once that's done, we're ready to build our first shader. So we're gonna right click on assets. We're gonna go to create. We're gonna find shader graph, go to URP and select lit shader graph. We'll call this neon glow effect. All right, once it's created, we'll double click on it to open it in shader graph. Shader graph opens docked in a window. I'm gonna undock it and make it full screen. With shader graph, everything is node based. So you're creating nodes in here and connecting them. On the left side, you have your properties. On the right side, you have your inspector settings. So node settings and graph settings. This is the general settings for your shader and this is settings for each property or node. Down here, you have a material preview. The material preview down here will allow you to see your shader as you build it. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create some properties. Let's go up to the top left and select the plus and find color. We'll call this neon color. We'll create another property, also color, and we'll call this emission color. We'll create another property. This one will be a float and we'll call it pulse speed. And finally, we'll create one more float and we'll call this glow strength. With those properties created, we can start making our shader. So let's start with our emission color. You can middle mouse to pan around the scene. So let's drop our emission color into our shader. And then let's grab the small dot and just drag into an open space and it'll open up the create node dropdown. We'll type multiple apply and just move that so you can see it. And then we're going to drop our glow strength in here and we'll drag our glow strength into the opposite slot. Now, if you select either emission color or neon color, you'll see over here in the node settings, there are default values. You can change the default value of your glow color that always starts. So I'm going to make it this bright red and I'll set our emission color also to, uh, let's say a bright orange. With our pulse and our glow strength, you can set the default values to any value. We'll just set them all to one. So now you can see emission color times glow strength and this is the value of that color. So now we're going to take the multiplied value of this color. Let's move this to the left. We'll take the multiplied value of this color and we'll multiply it again. So we'll just drag out from the dot on the right side that says out and then once it says create node we'll type multiply and we'll select the multiply. And actually I like the top going into A instead of B. You can right click on a line and just delete it. So we're going to multiply our glow string and emission color by something else. We're going to multiply it by something called a Fresnel effect. So if you just hit spacebar, you'll see the create node panel comes up again and you can start typing Fresnel, F-R-E. And the only thing that comes up is the Fresnel effect here. So let's select that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the output of that and send it right into our multiply here. Now, finally, we're gonna take the output of this and we'll move this over to the left a little more. If you middle mouse scroll down, it'll zoom out a little bit. Take the output of this multiply and multiply it one more time. So just drag it into space and type multiply. We'll do multiply A this time so it slots into the top. And finally, we'll take all of this output and we'll send it right into the emission color. And you can see as we do that, the main preview down here is going to update. So that's what our current glow shader looks like. Now I'm gonna take our neon color and I'm gonna drag it in up here near the top. And you can find a nice space and organize this however you want. And I'll just drag the neon color into the base color slot. So now I wanna get a pulsing effect, but you can see already that we have a nice glow happening right now. The middle of our sphere is the neon color and then the outside is a nice glowy color here, which you can see these two colors, this is the emissive color, is blending in with the base color and it looks pretty cool. Okay, so now I want this all to pulse. So how do we do that? I'm gonna drag in our pulse speed down here near the bottom and I'll just scroll in a little bit so we have more so we can see what we're doing. And I'll just drag out and then I'm gonna multiply this. A lot of multiplication happening here. And then I'm going to create a new node here in space. I'll hit spacebar and I'll type time. And I'm gonna pipe time into 
the B slot of this multiplication. So this is just going to take pulse speed, which right now is 1, and it's going to multiply it by the current time. Now we're going to output this to a sine wave. So just drag the dot out, and once it says create node, type sine and select just the sine here. Okay, and you can see that now the color is changing. It increases and decreases with a sine wave. Okay, we're gonna take that sine wave and drag out and we're going to select remap and we'll send it into the in slot. And with remap, we have an in slot for our current in value. And then we have an in min max and an out min max. So right now we have our min max is negative one to one and our out is zero to one. So that's clamping our negative value. Okay, and now I actually wanna move this all over. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'll select everything here and I'll just move it over here. And I'm going to pipe the output of the remap into the input of this multiplication node here. So now you can see that we're getting a nice pulsing effect here. And again, we have the pulse speed multiplying in here. So this affects the speed of the pulse. If I set it to 10, you can see it's pulsing much faster. If I set it to two, much slower and smoother. Okay, so let's give this a shot. We'll go ahead and hit the save button on the top left. And now we can close the shader graph editor and I'm gonna create a new capsule. So I'll right click in the hierarchy. I'll go to 3D object and I'll go to capsule. And I'm just gonna make sure it's centered by hitting reset on the transform there. And I'll scale it down to let's say 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And then we'll raise it up above the table here. Maybe it's stuck in the table. Okay, and now we'll create a new material. I'll just go to my materials directory here and I'll right click, go to create, select material and I'll call this glow mat. So I'll right click on materials, I'll go to create, and I'll select material. I'll call this glow capsule. And at this point, I can just drop the glow capsule material right on the capsule. You can see it's a white material right now. With the material selected, we're gonna drop down the shader drop down. We're gonna go to shader graphs and we'll find neon glow effect. And so I have a black emission color. Let me set the emission color to bright yellow there. Now, if you're not in play mode, Unity will update the shader randomly as you move around. So if if you really want to see this in effect, go ahead and hit play. We can modify the properties of our material now. So if I want my glow strength to really be bright, I'll set it to 100. And if I want it to blink faster, I'll set the pulse speed up. And there you go. You have your own custom built glow shader in Unity 6 with Shader Graph. All right, in just a few minutes, we created a glowing neon shader with Shader Graph in Unity 6. Now you can experiment, try different colors, patterns, or even textures. Shader Graph is super powerful, and this is just the beginning. All right, hit like and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel. And if you want to go deeper into Unity and actually build a full multiplayer game step-by-step, -step, check out my Unity 101 Bootcamp course. The first lessons are free. Links down below. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.